Hey everybody, it's Robert Dunn from ArtTop10.com and I'm very happy today to be chatting with Michael Ville Vargas. Hey Michael dude, how you doing man? Hey Rob, nice to see you man. Uh, it's good to see you. So dude, you, you are in Mexico at the moment, aren't you? Where? Whereabouts? Mexico City, quarantined. So yeah. <laughs> and what's on the lockdown. Like? On the lockdown. What's it like in Mexico at the moment? Um, I think we're almost hitting the 20,000 um, diseases. Uh, yeah. Uh, deaths, you yes. know, and yeah, yeah. Um, well, yeah, it's it's not good, man. Yeah. No, it's no, no, no. And um, what what time of day is it there in Mexico at the moment? It's it's uh, one one o'clock. One o'clock, yeah, and it's seven seven o'clock here in the UK, dude. It's lovely yeah. to see you in Mexico. Um, I haven't seen you in real life for ages because we were at uh, art school together, weren't we, back in the day, yes. Silly and Gilts? Yes, indeed, yeah. <laughs> That was a fantastic experience, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it was indeed. Sitting Guilds of London Art School back then, and we had that coffee every day, that coffee that kind of sucked your face into your eye. <laughs> the crispy tea for lunch, man. And the crispy tea for lunch, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that was hilarious, man. That, that was a good one, man. That was good. That was good. Or bangers and mash, isn't it? Or bangers and mash, yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Take it back to the, the classic English vibe. But, but, dude, now you've got this crazy tattoo parlor in Mexico, man. Yeah, yeah. I went into, um, well, uh, well, first of all, uh, hello to all your audience, and thanks so much for the invitation for our top ten. Uh, thanks a lot, Rob. No problem. Um, and, uh, yeah, indeed, um, it's been um, kind of like a roller coaster uh, ride uh, since uh, I came back. I came back from London um, about, what was that, like 12 years ago? Yeah, it must be. Uh, uh, more or less, yeah, and yeah, uh, yeah 11, 11, 10, 12 years ago, and uh, and then I I, um, I started painting here, uh, and then um, it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't getting much feedback. I didn't have this, enough space to really work. Um, yeah, you know, I like sometimes big works. Uh, oh, dude, big scale I, I remember the massive, paintings, massive like pieces that, yeah. you made. And uh, so I didn't have the space, I didn't have the room, I didn't have the, the adequate conditions like to really, you know, get on with it. Yeah, yeah. So um, I had all my machines, I left them for uh, some time. And um, I really decided that it was time. I, I always wanted to have um, uh, my own tattoo parlor. And since I was like, you know, I started tattooing when I was 15 years old. Well, you actually started doing tattoos at 15. Yeah, that, that, it's what really started me or like got me into the arts world in a way. Yeah. Uh, usually it's the other way. You kind of go to go to um, to art school and then you go to um, tattooing or something. But um, I don't know. The, this, it kind of like it just trapped me in. Really, kind of like uh, once once I found I, or discovered like tattooing, then it just got a hold on me and, and it just wouldn't let go and. So and I started tattooing back then, and I always dreamt of uh, having, uh, yeah. you know, this dream of, of place for tattooing on my own and stuff. But back then, back then it was rough. Back then there were there weren't any tattoo studios in Mexico. Okay. We actually opened the first one in 1993. No way, man. Legally, I mean, <laughs> there was some, you know, underground. Uh, House house scratchers and so on. No, was it actually uh, illegal? Was it but illegal? There wasn't a proper uh, professional studio. Was it until illegal? 1993, um, okay. and um, it was a good collaboration. We did. We were four. Uh, we were four friends, and our uh, associate. Uh, yeah, I was invited by by one of them, uh, a good friend called. Uh, well, they used to call him in Piranha. His name is Raul. Okay. And uh, yeah, uh, that was it. Was a good kickstart. Um, because prior to that, really, and well, still, uh, it was a complete taboo, you know. Oh, what, uh, what? People that have tattoos, they were all just labeled as, um, as crazy people, dogs uh, dropped out from jail or things okay. like that, you know. Lincoln's, so, so, uh, criminals. so it wasn't actually illegal to have a tattoo or do a tattoo, but it really labeled you as the wrong part of society, yeah. You know, back then there wasn't there wasn't any label, so that was what the, a lot of people worked in, in into it to um, to allow it, you know, to okay. to keep the, the standard of a, a profession, you no? Know, okay. Within okay. within the societal uh, 
yeah. function of things, you know? Yeah. So, so if I, if I, if I'm, I'm just terrified of having a tattoo and I'd wake up the next day and just start crying and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but if I came into your studio, say like, well, not tomorrow, but say in six months, if I came in, how would I choose what I have? Have you got like different pictures or stuff or? Oh uh, yeah. There's, I mean, there's, there's splash out the wall kind of thing. Yeah. And then there's the. Um... And then there's there's custom tattoos that that are made for uh, personally for each client, um, which I th I consider the the best because um, I mean it, to a certain extent it, we we do derive from what you really want you know as a tattooing as a service and because I'm the only tattooist in my studio I'm the only one tattooing here okay. uh, I have to I have to um, uh, I'm a bit kind of like chained into um, whether what the people want. To get tattooed, or um, and and then occasionally I get uh, uh, the the ones that I love, like clients that say like, hey, you know, do something for me. I just like kind of this this direction of idea, and then you kind of yeah, that's those are the those are the ones that you kind of like um, feel more free of uh, you know. So so they literally feel to, so to the creative process and so on. So, so those people literally say to you, just go for it. Tattoo anything you fancy on me. Yeah, I've had, I've had a couple that they've, they've asked me um, just to do whatever I want. And I said, okay, that's pretty cool, man. Um, and then you just go for it, you know, just yeah. let it rip <laughs> and get the needles uh, flowing into, into the skin. Yeah. <laughs> Do, do, do you want to show us some of the equipment you use? Yeah, I got here. I got a couple of machines. Uh, this is kind of like the the old school. Hold on, yeah. machine. And uh, um, yeah, this is um, this is a coil machine. Okay. It's actually a very nice machine. It's a Dan Dringenberg. Okay. And you you get the grip, and then you get the cartridge right there. Okay. This one's been used, but it's been used on a on a plastic doll. So yeah, it's safe. It's yeah, it has no yeah, it hasn't had contact with blood or anything, you know. Okay. And uh, that's, I left it like that just to show it to you. That's really cool. Yeah, and then that, that was kind of like the old school. Um, yeah, and and then but well, prior like when I started tattooing, um, we had to make our own machines. Yeah, okay. so we build them with a with a small motor, a uh, uh, rotating motor, and then you just plug it into a, a whatever steel bended in the ninety degrees, and then okay. lock it up, tie it up, or tape it, or whatever you had on on hand. Yeah. And then usually, sometimes like when, when we really started, it was very precarious, you know. Yeah, yeah. And um, we had to connect the machine to a nine mole bolt battery, and usually your your client will hold the battery. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then you just stick a new way to swim through it, no? Uh, now, well, the 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 swing industry has really developed, and it's it's like yeah, I mean, then you get like machines like these, oh, which whoa. is a, a rotary, baby, it's that's beautiful rotary. It's a beautiful machine, yeah. I mean, they're beautiful. Um, it does vibrate a little bit, yeah. And then they did the phantom machine, so you see, like from from a, a big coil. Yeah, a big coil machine. Wow, well, then you've gone to these. Man, I mean, you see? does it does it hurt any less? Yeah, than man. Yours? Uh, so the size, uh, the weight is is completely different, no? Uh, I mean, for for tattooing so, for so many years and stuff, I started uh, to get some tendonitis in my arm. And so that's I had to kind of like stop using coil machines, um, okay. because um, yeah, because of their pain and stuff. And now with the new rotaries, they're very light. Okay, it's just you know yeah. Kind of like, what 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 about for the client? You get to two for hours. Like if you're doing a long session. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, in 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 what we have like. Pain wise, or yeah, yeah, yeah. So the client, do the new machines? Does it hurt to actually have a tattoo done, or is it just afterwards? Or? Yeah, yeah, they do hurt, man. Yeah, it's I mean, it's, it's needles uh, puncturing yeah. the, the 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 skin, and there's not a lot of bleeding 
okay. not until you get into like mats, like you know, big cartridges like these, which which um, this was they have like twenty seven needles on each cart on each one. Whoa! Okay. So here you got like twenty seven needles, and they're going in and out. Man. And uh, and so it opens the pores a bit more, and that's when you get a bit more bleeding. But when it when it's like a, a small uh, liner like these, there's usually no yeah, it's not no 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 bleeding. No, it's just little little droplets. Oh. Uh, and, and then again, well, it it really depends on where you get the tattoo. You know? Yeah. So it's either where you're getting it in a in a very, very sensitive area like um, joints or you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, your feet, your neck, your ribs, your, now your collarbones. Yeah, it's okay. just places that hurt a bit more. Hmm. And then it does. It does depend on the resilience of the of the client. You know, yeah. some people have a lot of uh, pain threshold, a higher threshold than others. No, I remember you said the girls always had a higher threshold. Yeah, they they do seem to like hold it more together. You know, they're yeah, they're tougher, and then they're like. They're tougher than us, dudes, like, you know, man, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. They, they, they do, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, they, just, they, they look a bit more flimsy, you know, like, you know, that kind of uh, delicate, no? That's the word, more yeah. delicate. But they seem to be, like, tougher than, than, like, the really tough guys I get, like, you know, big muscles, and, oh, yeah, I could 10, I can hold, withstand 10, 10, because uh, I, I get numbers, no? I get, the, like, from zero to 10, no? How, what's your pain threshold, no? If oh, I'm a 10, man, I can hold anything, I just, you go in 10 minutes and they're fucking crying and <laughs> jumping out of the pegs. They want to get out, you know, they want to get their back in. So. And, and then you get this really tiny, skinny girl, like, you know, you fucking hell, you could go for three hours and just no problem. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so it does, I mean, it does depend, not really. Now I'm just taking the, the piss really. Yeah, yeah, but, no, uh, no. but yeah, it, I mean, it, it does depend, like, where, where you're getting it done and how big it is. Like, yeah. um, I think that uh, you'll have to divide it in sessions. Whether the size or the like, how how much you can take in, you know? Yeah. So, so somebody like me who's absolutely terrified <laughs> of having a tattoo, what what if I was gonna if I was gonna risk it? What what would you do on me if I said go for anything? What would you do? Okay, first, what I would think I'll do is I'll tie you down to the chair, like you know, a big rope. Yeah. Tight knots and this up, so you won't move at all. <laughs> 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 uh, I don't know what we'll do, man. But uh, now it'll be cool. I don't know some block forms or something like that, or be painting. I don't know, man. Something that'll be cool, man. <laughs> oh, I want to like some it. forms there with uh, something with music. Cause I know you like music a lot, and then, yeah, yeah, that would be cool. <laughs> that would be really cool. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll think about it. <laughs> yeah, I do, man. So when you're in Mexico City, I'm going to tattoo you, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to come over to your place and wake up in the morning. It'll just be like a spider across my face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. But, but, but dude, the, the thing, obviously, I remember from art school is not just you did the beautiful tattoos, but you did these quite, you know, um, poignant political kind of paintings about Mexico and the border and stuff like that. And I think you got a few of those behind you as well. Okay, yeah, I did, I did I did a couple downstairs. Um yeah, then then after after the, the, the twin sort of um kind of um start there, uh, obviously my mom was like, completely against it and, and she has been against it ever since, like until four years ago that she kinda like accepted that okay, she she has a, a son that dedicates to tattooing and he's making a living out of it and then she it kinda like I don't know, man, the coin just kinda dropped and then yeah, yeah. it clicked, but it took like 30 years for her to really get her um, to grasp to it, no? And uh, so it, that made it a bit hard sometimes and, you know, sort of fighting and so on. But uh, well, it was part of the fun, I guess. Um, <laughs> police, man, dude, here here back then in the 80s, man, police were just absolutely against it, man. Yeah. I used to get um, taken in, uh, beaten, and a lot of times and a lot of in, in many different places just for having a tattoo or well, I used to be kind of like a punk rocker and yeah, yeah. you know have like spikes and sometimes a mohawk and and they just feel like that kind of stuff and well, okay I understand you know um, yeah. their relevance within their tight uh, paycheck and what they're doing yeah, yeah. but things have changed a lot now 
Now right. I've tattooed full sleeves on police covenants, you know, right. and and that's that's we've we've been joking about it like with them like oh you remember back in where you up in in duty up in the eighties? I said oh yeah no it was completely different. Yes, I said yes I know man, <laughs> <laughs> you know <laughs> I know, <laughs> and uh, and now so it, it it all has changed and that's that's really good in, uh, to a certain extent you know. Um, uh, the paradigm of uh, taboo yeah, is yeah. kind of being blurred now a bit, and now there's a lot more acceptance, and there's a lot more, um, yeah, a lot more just um, how to say, like input into into the whole tattoo industry here in Mexico City. You know, I know many countries are different, you know, uh, yeah. but here it, it took a little bit more time to develop in, in that in that stance, you know. <laughs> and then, and then, so then, uh, then it, it kind of like then it took me to painting, no? Yeah, yeah. And um, I'm a, I'm kind of like um, how do you say? My painting do drive a narrative to a certain extent, no? Okay, yeah. And um, and they portray sometimes um, societal or uh, social conditions within it, no? I try to to in a way to reflect, yeah. you know. Society through painting or the dilemmas of of it okay. to a certain extent. You no, know? yeah, yeah. Sometimes, sometimes it can go a bit radical and it can be a bit, uh, you know, within the boundaries of the acceptable and the uh, transgressional. You know, yeah, yeah. But uh, but I try to like sort of tell a story in a way. You know, and with this, with this, like what you saw of me working in City and Guilds, it was. Uh, it was a big work uh, when when it came out from there, like me being a migrant or uh, mm. an immigrant and being in in a in a foreign land. Um, yeah, of course. It kind of like it kind of make make some sense. It was kind of like one of these like I don't know weird yeah. flashbacks. I'm getting a flashback, but uh, one of these kind of like it just makes sense to kind of try to paint something about it. You no, know, and what would that ring to, and what does it portray? Through like the expectations of the people, with what their hope is into finding better conditions of living or yeah. uh, different other things, but uh, but yeah, then, yeah. then I, I kind of like em embrace this uh, illegal illegal immigrant uh, series, uh, which started being a very tiny paintings, yeah, and and they develop into huge scale huge uh, works. Um, show show us one, show us one. Yeah, let me show you one. I'll show you one. This this was actually the first one I did. Oh really? I see. This is this is the first painting I did of that series. Oh, I remember that painting. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. T take it back a tiny bit so we can see the whole uh, thing. Yeah, nice, nice. That's a beautiful painting. I love that one. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's a tiny one, but it does really convey all that. Um, I don't know. It's, it's got this feeling into it. So what's happening? Walking under the desert sun and these yeah. conditions, yeah. Oh yeah, actually, actually I actually hadn't thought about that. Formally, you've pushed all the people right down to the bottom. Yeah. You? So you've got the big skies almost quite oppressive on top of them. Yeah, this um, um, ominous yeah. big blue and what's deep actually, sky. So what's the narrative to the picture? What's actually happening in the in the picture? In here, um, you see these guys, well, they're, they're like all walking in a line. Yeah. Yeah, these guys. And this is this is, this is the coyote. This is, they, they guide them through certain 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 places uh, where there is safe to cross over so, to the other side of the border. And so on. This, is, this is actually in the border of Mexico and the United States. So. Okay. And so these guys uh, are going from Mexico to the U.S., are they? From Mexico to the U.S., yeah, but uh, I mean, taken under consideration, just sometimes there's people coming in from Honduras, from El Salvador, from Guatemala, from, you know, oh, okay. yeah, and they're all going through there. Um, uh, and and, and their, their, in, hope is, their hope is, what, will, what do they hope to find in the U.S.? They hope to find... Yeah, well, get a better, decent living and uh, earn yeah. some more money and yeah, probably yeah. send back home. Yeah. To the relatives or their moms yeah. and dads and stuff like that, uh, so they can they can do it better back home. Yeah, you know, I mean, a lot of these people uh, which illegally are crossing borders is because um, they don't have the conditions of uh, living um, 
which are prosperous or yeah, yeah. just even decent, you know, just just yeah. even decent conditions of living, you know. Some some a lot of these people are like beyond misery level of you yeah, know. No, no. They're oh, for, for, for eating uh, just a couple of beans and corn and chilies and that's it, you know. Oh, dude, and there's lucky the they get some of that, you know. Sometimes they just yeah, you yeah. know, it's, yeah, it's crazy. So so the guy in the red, he's the coyote. He's the guy who's what leading them. Is he the yeah he he guys and he takes them through through certain places like I mean this is just probably just getting getting really close to the mm. to the river of north no okay and and this is they point them the way through and sometimes sometimes this all the guys is they they pay this guy a lot of money yeah 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 but I mean they they make a really huge effort to to bring around that money and then they pay it and sometimes they they even they steal the money and they don't cross them over and. Oh. It's just a scam and things yeah, like that, you know. Yeah. Crazy, crazy, crazy stuff, you know. Mm. Uh, and uh, yeah, I mean that's that's some. You can see like here on this one. Yeah. You probably remember that one. Yeah, yeah. I remember that one. That's lovely. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. Yeah. You can see you can see the guy reflecting the the rear mirror. <laughs> that's really cool. And he's the guy. Yeah. He's the coyote guy, is he? Well, that's <laughs> cool, man. That's really cool. I like yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, fun doing that one. <laughs> and it's the same kind of thing, no? So like they get them up in these trucks and then they go, boom, they go. And then some of them then they cross them all to the other side. Or they or they tell them where to cross. And then they have to take it from there, you know? Mm -hmm. Really risky. <laughs> and this then when they gather like going through. Okay. And th and this this project was kind of like uh we started out from trying to uh, recover a uh, different source of media, like from pictures. I had a dodgy cell phone back then with a really bad camera. Yeah, yeah. And then, but it was still like taking pictures in the news and stuff like that. Yeah. Newspaper cutouts, uh, magazines, you know, whatever I could get my hands on to okay. certain imagery of these. And then I tried kind of like to portray as if they were like pictures telling a story throughout still images. No, in in a gallery or in whatever uh, place that were like hang out, no, and um, and so so they have this kind of narrative of like where they start, how how the all the all the the journey through it, yeah. And some yeah. people make it, some people don't, yeah. You know, some of them die, some of them some of them are lucky, and then they start a new life. Uh, some get busted. Some get busted, baby. Yeah. Yeah, they then they're deported, sent it back, you know. It's interesting, you know. I, I never thought about it before, but but now I'm looking at them now. The the figures have got quite a almost sculptural, monumental quality. They've all got this kind of um weight to them. Uh -huh. Yeah, I mean the the way they they're kind of like painted, mm. like and to a certain extent, uh, the way I paint, whether I'm not trying to do something happy realistic or something like that. Um, I do love the quality of the paint. You know, when you yeah. feel the, the the how it drools, how it kind of like, you know, the the sensuality the, the gooiness of it, no? Mm. And and it's just trying to use like kind of like as if it were um, an expression in itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, each mark, each brush stroke. And and I kind of like does that. And these ones because they're quite tiny, they they don't convey that much that uh, Sensational. Oh, I think they but do. There's some, there's some that do a little bit more than others. No, I and they're think... actually just kind of like droplets of uh, smothered paint on the canvas. No. Oh, dude, I think I think that they for me they have got quite a heavy weighty quality, which is interesting because because it, it it sort of I don't know I don't know what it does. It somehow adds to the the emotional content of the narrative. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, Yeah, and this one, this one you can see it clearly. Um, yeah, like like the way, for example, the, this jacket is yeah. done is just literally just like you know, yeah. as much as the paint there, and and then the, describing the the shape of of these things. Uh, I'll do a close up on this one, maybe yeah, I don't yeah. know if you can see it. I see like oh, dude, yeah, and, nice. you, and you pretty much can see hmm. you pretty much can see like each brush stroke. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, creating this uh, figurative pattern of the image I'm working on. 
Um, that's usually that's usually what I really like about paint. Yeah, is that quality that you can get the quality of the medium. Um, and I, I do like a lot oil oil paint. Yeah, is, yeah. is is my 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 preferable yeah. um, uh, from I don't know acrylic and stuff like that. I mean, you can still do it in acrylic, but I don't know there's something about the smell. Yeah, of the lucid <laughs> oil and the Palmer varnish and yeah, oh, man, exactly. <laughs> the medium so you, you, it really gets your gets you going. Uh, your note in the, working through it. Oh man, you you know what I hadn't realised before about these paintings as well is uh, the way you've cropped the image. So there's there's often something happening off off screen, as it were. Uh -huh. Yeah, like these guys are all looking. There's something bad going to happen. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So it's like yeah, at least they're probably hiding in the desert in the night, no? Mm. And they're waiting. Maybe some like they're listening to the the border patrol down yeah. there, and it's just like terrified. They're like, looking there, no? Yeah. So so there's something about um, very deep emotional, mm. um, how to say, content that conveys yeah. um, uh, the work through through what what they're experiencing, you know. In, in what they were living, what they what they were living. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I think that's that's one of the things. Kind of, yeah, it does 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 make that. Um, there's some two guys being busted there. Oh man, that's cool. I like it. They're probably asking for papers and so on. Yeah. You know? I love it. Also, also you got really nice uh, light and dark contrasts and stuff in those pictures, man. I mean. The dark bit at the top, and then it's lighter down the front. It's quite—I mean, they're, they're, they're formally they're very effective as well. Sure. Oh, come on. So you know, just the way uh, the, the the balance of the dark and the light—it's very neat. I hadn't realized the sophistication in them before. Yeah. Well, like here, well, this is a completely different thing. This is just a guy who sells ice lollies in a park or so on. Oh man. And. Uh, <laughs> that's weird because that's quite got an ominous feeling as well. Is that me? Yeah, I like that. That's really cool. I like the lollies. I like the little um, pig thing. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. That's cool. Oh, dude, they're, they're really good, man. Hey, yeah, there, there's something about um, these um, expressionist way of painting that I do like a lot. Which when 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 you get the the fresh uh, markings of with the paint and the brush, and it just really speak out to yeah, me, yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah. So are, are and, you? So are you? Are you getting back into the oil painting again? Um, yeah, I started like since I, was, I opened the tattoo studio. Um, it's it's been a while. Um, got my first kid was born like uh, eight years ago. Yeah, yeah. And I kind of like stopped painting because of the solvents. I didn't have a. a, a Big room to paint and I, you know I can't use solvents with them because yeah, yeah. it just does their brains in. No? Yeah. And uh, so yeah, I want to keep them safe, you know. Yeah, no, um, exactly. Not. The, <laughs> or, or try to. You know, <laughs> most, you know, I mean, they can these that for you know, so, well, Anyway, but uh, yeah, um, and uh, so I did kind of like took a break from painting, and now with this quarantine, I do, I do to a certain extent, even though I regret this quarantine and this whole. Spang that's going around the world um, for all the pain that is causing and the suffering and so on. Yeah, yeah. I've actually been finding a good way out of it, uh, and that was that he took me back into painting, you know. That's really cool. Uh, so, you know, I can't complain about it. No, it's, I'm really enjoying it mm. to a certain extent. I mean, it goes out. So I was really trying no, no, to keep some sanity being mean, locked up and so on. It's forced but, uh, you to look at things differently, hasn't it? Yeah, it's just changed your outlook and changed, given you a chance to do something different. Yeah, mm. exactly. Yeah, mm. and 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 well, for example, I, I started different different things within. I think I think because my painting always has, like I mentioned, like before, it's kind of like. Something just got something to do with the social condition of man, yeah. you know? And 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 they follow kind of like that narrative. I'll show you what painting it is. It's just kind of like a different thing. It's an airbrush. I was just kind of like having fun working yeah. with these uh, with the airbrushes. I've never used one before, and I think I mean it's, it's pretty it's pretty brilliant the way 
you can lay down the, sh the shadows and so on. Um, I'm, I'm amazed. So, this is great. so it's, it's the it's a big different different way of working with. You know? Dude, I mean, it's, it's but, a, it... um, I've come back to oil painting, and uh, yeah, I really missed it a lot. I did. I, I didn't realize how much I missed it. Until yeah, yeah, yeah. I started doing a couple of paintings, some more paintings here. And uh, yeah, so hopefully now I'm developing a couple of projects with um, something to do with uh, uh, more of the spiritual and emotional. Um, okay. uh, well, they do have a more like emotional, spiritual feel to it. Okay, nice. Like from the dark side of man, and you okay. know, but also the lighter side of man. It's like um, whether there's love, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. or fear. Just I think those are. The two deriv derivatives of all different kinds of emotions. It's just yeah. those two, and all derives from those two, like anger, wrath, mm -hmm. um, all sorts of different emotions. I think they, they just develop from love or from fear. And at the so, moment, you got loads of fear, haven't you? Loads of... Yeah, there's a lot of fear in the world. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so they, they, we got to try to 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 embrace that that other aspect, the the, the bright. Part of it, no. Yeah. To counter, to counter, um, to counter it, yeah. To counter the effect of um, what all those because it, it does it does become collective. Yeah. To a certain extent, like if you see all the memes and all these stuff that's going around, like Facebook and Instagram and so on. Yeah. And it's all about like oh this how how bad all this is and so on. I mean, yeah, if you do live it personally, yeah, it's was. Dreadful, you know. Yeah. There's, there's no other word for it, but uh, mm. but you do have to try to see a better part of it. Like, yeah, yeah. And do, um, and do you think painting the, has the power the world to do that? Started breathing again once we stopped. Yeah, yeah. sorry. Do, do do you think painting has the power to change people like that to make a difference? Oh, dude, you pause. So what? Sorry, oh, I couldn't hear you. Yeah, kind of like, do, do you think painting has the power to change people for that positive? Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I think it can inject a good. Um, I mean, even though that there's, there's a lot of things like talking about now going into the art world, so on. No, let's say that what painting is dead and so on. But you can yeah. What I think is that you cannot kill something that has never been alive to a certain extent organically. No. So this is this we're just talking visually. You know, it's a yeah. visual language. Um, uh, for someone who's trying not to do just uh, the decorative painting, you know, uh, and things like that, I do think that they can convey and they do have, uh, they can they, you can powerfully uh, develop a message through painting or through image making. Yeah. Um, and so video does, so, you know, uh, movies, um, short movies, long movies, so on, no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sculptures, uh, theater, Dancing, acting, all those. Um, I think all the arts, you know, they they do have, or they do all uh, can convey and uplift yeah. um, our human condition, not yeah. to a certain extent. I mean, yeah, they, I mean, it, sometimes it does depend on like uh, whether how is your how your experience has, has been through the years and through history, what you have lived, yeah. uh, or your personal uh, upbringing how it was, where it was, and so on, to appreciate uh, certain things or to understand. But I think um, there, is a, there is a common, common, how do you call it, like um, yeah. a common core yeah. that, that does unite us all in an energetic something. You know? yeah. and, and I think everybody can perceive that. And I think looking at a piece of art, you can really... Tap into that, you know. Yeah. yeah. Whether yeah. it's a, uh, a certain media or whatever, but uh, you do definitely have the the the, the capability to mm. to understand and to feel. You yeah. Know? And sometimes, because when you see, you see, like you you see, uh, let's say we're two two people together here appreciating a piece of art, mm. and then one can completely understand something very different than the other, you no? Know? Yeah, yeah. And. Um, but but to a certain extent, there, there will be a, a, a common common denominator there. There will tap the both people will tap into it. No, oh, I see what you mean. That's quite interesting. So I think it's kind of like the universal language of 
of speaking through imagery, you know, and through creativity, uh, uh, which I think is it's, uh, one of the brightest and, uh, and better qualities that art has really to deliver to man or to humankind. No? Dude, that, I, I, that I, sense, uh, it, it allows us from, from becoming too stiff and too locked up in ourselves yeah, into yeah. appreciating something more, um, some, something more wider within the, the perception. No? Yeah, totally. Yeah, I think, I think that's one of the things that's really fascinated me uh, through trying to create um, art that kind of speaks to the people or, uh, or to people by itself, you know, mm. um, and, and in these uh, social conditions. But it he, he has to reflect certain aspects of that uh, in order to really um, make people not aware, because we're all aware of things that go, go out in the world. But, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, some people just... Yeah. prefer to keep a blind eye to certain things yeah, yeah, but yeah. uh but i think the people that want to be way awakened mm. and to to really perceive and know what's going down mm. um yeah i mean i i reckon there's there's definitely something there to yeah. to oh, tap into dude, and, I, and be emotionally challenged you know yeah. i think you've explained it very beautifully actually um what painting does. <laughs> cool. <laughs> and dude, I think on on that beautiful note, we should um I should let you get back to um uh, teaching your son the English. <laughs> and, yeah, uh, yeah, do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm gonna try. I started a, I started a painting. It's one of those series. Uh, you, you remember the series of the beheadings uh, yeah. that I did. Yeah, with yeah. My, my my self ego and so on. No, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm I'm doing I'm going back to it. I'm doing it now. Working on uh, uh, start a new work on that. Okay. So yeah, now definitely get back to it. Uh, it's been it's really lovely to uh, to see you, dude. Lovely to uh, chat. Yeah, and um, pretty much I did all the talking. I don't know. <laughs> that's that's the idea. So that's the idea. It's been <laughs> ages since I've uh, spoken English with someone like. <laughs> like this, you know, and and yeah, I guess I'm I'm quite thrilled about it. Oh, dude, uh, cool, thank you, thank you so very much for inviting me. Oh, thanks a lot for coming uh, on, man. And it's 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 been a pleasure, man. Nice and one, yeah, keep it up, man. You're doing a great job, man, with these oh. uh, our top ten and your painting, man. Oh, I do admire you. your painting a lot as well. Thank you, thank um, you. I like the expressiveness of it. I think oh. it's uh, yeah. I don't know. You should, you should do a talk about your work, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and I'll try and build up my courage for the tattoo. Yeah, man. Yeah, when, when you're here in Mexico, I'll, I'm going to get you some new your skin, man. You'll see that, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Cheers, dude, man. Okay. Hey, bro. Okay. Nice talking to you, man. Brilliant talking, man. Okay. Bye. Bomb buckler.